Oh, 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 we started? Oh, you caught me. Well, today's message will have something to do with farming. Let me start with these words from Philippians, though. This is what brought me all around to these, ver to these verses that I want to share with you tonight. If we start with Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about these things that are praiseworthy. I know what those things are. Those things are the things we find in the Bible. Those are things that are praiseworthy. The things that we should be focused on all the time. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because today uh, the news was on, and there seems to be now uh, some of the some of the processing plants for meat and poultry have had a shutdown because of the coronavirus. There'll be a temporary temporary uh, shortage uh, of different meats and pro uh, meats and chicken, I got to say, and, uh, but that started making me think when I heard about these shortages, I started thinking about, oh, now on top of everything else, now there will be a food shortage. Food shortages in the, in the Bible were called famines. And that, as soon as I started thinking about a food shortage, famine, my mind, I, I did exactly what the Bible told me, focus on the things that are noble, trustworthy, and good. So I thought about the Bible. And the first verses that came right to my mind about famine is in Amos chapter 8, verse 11. Now listen to what Amos uh, said to the, what the Lord said to the people. The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land. Not a famine of food or a thirst of water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. The Lord said, I was going to send a famine, and that famine would not be about food, but would about, be about not hearing the words of the Lord. So that news that I saw on TV, what that reminded me of are these verses. And these verses reminded me that whenever we have, well, when we focus on the things that are going on right now, there's so much to worry about. There's so many things to be concerned about. And when we focus on those things and we leave the Bible out of it, we bring a famine of God's word upon ourselves and that famine is the worst kind of famine at all because it it hurts our souls now at the time of amos there was a time between what we call the old testament and what we call the new testament there was a time where there was no communication with god and the prophets we we have many years of just a blank space in our Bible where there was no uh, word from God. But then Jesus came. And here's what Jesus said. Remember, there was a famine of God's word going on. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. 
This is amazing because Jesus was on the earth and he had the same exact will as God. Even while God was in heaven and Jesus was on the earth, they shared the same will. And Jesus went on to say, and this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up on the last day. For my father, my father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last days. Many of the people around Jesus at that point, there were people, religious leaders. It says here, at this time, the Jews began to grumble about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. What was the bread that came down from heaven when the, when the, when the Hebrew people were in the wilderness and they were escaping uh, when, they, when they left Egypt? And as they were traveling through the desert, they had no food. And God brought manna, bread from heaven, down to the ground. And they collected it and they had food to eat. Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. This infuriated these people, some people, because uh, they couldn't understand uh, that how could Jesus say he was God? But Jesus said, whoever uh, believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. I am the bread of life. He brought life back to people who were spiritually in darkness. He, became, he broke the spiritual famine by bringing God's will, God's word to all of us. So now I want to go back to Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Uh, we're going to read to about verse 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Wow. So when I'm watching the news and I turn that news off, what should I do? Start to worry about what they just talked about. No. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Things are slowly getting better. And the Bible tells us, do not be anxious about anything. The time will come when we're all together again. But until then, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious for anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. We need to think about Jesus. We need to think about God's words because those are the only things that are always noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Think about such things. It goes on, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of all peace will be with you. Those were Paul's words to the Philippians. Rejoice always. Again, I say, rejoice. 
and bring your prayers, your petitions to God, and he will hear them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we thank you for all that you have done. Father, we thank you for your protection through this time. We thank you for the miracles of healing we have seen. Father, be with the families who are mourning loss right now. And Father, be with all of us and lead us and guide us. Help us to understand your path for us through this time. And Father, when things don't go our way, help us to accept. Help us to find that peace that surpasses all human understanding. Father, that peace comes from your Holy Spirit. We ask you now, fill us, Father, with your Holy Spirit. Help us to rid ourselves of the things that keep us from being fully filled with your Spirit and your love. Take away our frustrations. Take away our fears. Take away our worries. Father, we need to be a people to lead others to you. Make us worthy to do that. Free us, Father, for joyful obedience so that we can follow and praise you so others will come to know and to love you. And we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we need to be people in this world to show others how great our God is. We need to be people to show others that we don't have to live in fear. We need to be those people to bring the light of God, to bring the light of Christ, to share the Holy Spirit. We need to be those people to share that with everyone we can. Yes, we can't meet face to face, but pick up the phone. Call someone. Tell them you're praying for them. Pray for them. It will make a difference. God, to me, is trying to get my attention each and every day. And we need to respond to that. We need to remember these words. We need to remember the words that Paul wrote to the Philippians. Rejoice always in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Thanks for watching. Amen.